did you know that it's possible to run Instagram ads and get tons of Instagram followers very quickly? In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. If you want to grow your Instagram following quickly, don't want to go through years of constantly posting, this is the strategy I'd recommend. So I'm in an example meta ad account and here's where we're going to run our Instagram ads from to get these Instagram followers. I just want to quickly touch on why you would want Instagram followers. Why? 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 There's the very obvious reason of you want to following because you can then post to sell products and services and things like that to them. And that's an absolutely valid reason. That's why I want more Instagram followers. That's why many people want more Instagram followers. But another reason that I think is less appreciated is that it really helps with your credibility. So if people see your ads online, your content online, whatever it is that you're doing online to try and generate business, they will check out your social profiles. And if they come through to your Instagram account and see that you've got hardly any followers, nothing going on, that is going to hurt your credibility and people will be less likely to purchase from you. This is obviously more important in certain industries over others, but it is a factor. Having at least a few hundred or a few thousand followers can really make a difference in someone going, oh, this person's legitimate, I'm going to buy from them, I'm going to book them for my speaking gig, I'm going to have them on a podcast, all sorts of different things can come from having an Instagram following. I think that's a good reason to build one as well. So with that said, let's go ahead and get into it. So as I said, I'm within an example meta ad account. If you're not familiar with how to set one of these up, you don't already have a meta ad account, I'll include a link in the video description below to another video that shows you exactly how to go about doing that. So from here, which is ads manager, we want to go ahead and click on this green plus create button and then we're going to create a new campaign. Here, we're going to go ahead and use the traffic objective. It'll make more sense um, in a minute. We go ahead and click continue. Um, and as that loads, I just want to quickly say that with other types of Facebook ad, Instagram ad campaigns, we would almost certainly not use the traffic objective, but we do want to in this specific circumstance. So if you watch my other videos and thinking, hang on, you don't normally do this. I just wanted to quickly clarify um, that point. OK, so this is the campaign level. If you're not familiar with a, a typical Facebook ad, Instagram ad campaign structure, you've got campaign ad set and then ad level. Um, and what I'm going to do in this video is touch on the things that you do need to do and do need to change. If you want sort of full walkthroughs on Facebook ad campaign creation, then you you can find that out again there'll be a link in the video description to another video that walks you through the entire process i'm going to touch on the things that really matter here so let's just quickly rename this so that we um we know what we're talking about here so i'm going to call this an instagram follower campaign and we don't need to do anything else at the campaign level unless of course you fit within a special ad category we can leave all the rest of the the settings as they are then i want you to jump over to the ad set level now we'll come to ad set name in a minute before we get there i want to quickly talk about this conversion um, section, particularly the conversion location. Now you see the default here is website. Most people that are running traffic campaigns um, on Meta, they want to send people to their website because they want people to become a lead, purchase, all that sort of stuff. But we don't want to do that. We want Instagram followers. That's what the, the topic of this video is about. Therefore, what you want to do is select Instagram profile. And when you do so, you may or may not see this little um, pop up saying that this destination isn't supported by standard enhancements, which is something that happens at the ad level. Um, so just don't worry about that. Basically, if it pops up, click continue and crack on. We don't need to worry about standard enhancements anyway. OK, so this Instagram profile um, option as the location. So when people click on your ads, they'll be taken through to your Instagram profile is relatively new. It hasn't been available that long. So previously, we might have recommended different strategies for running ads and getting Instagram followers. Um, we may have used different campaign types or we may have um, recommended simply running ads from within the Instagram app and because you could send people to your profile directly there and, and a good way to get followers. But now we do this because this is the option. And what we found is that when testing this setup, a traffic campaign within a proper um, ad account using Ads Manager will perform equally in terms of cost per follow as actually running ads from within the Instagram app. But with this setup here, we get more control, more flexibility. We're used to operating from it. And if you want to be serious about your advertising and getting good results, you definitely want to be operating out of Ads Manager. So just wanted to clarify that because I imagine one of the comments that I would get from people is, um, can I just run ads from within the Instagram app instead? Yes, you can. I would recommend this, but it's not a big deal if you go with the other option. What I'm about to show you going forward will still apply. OK, so select Instagram profile. Now, once we've got that selected, the performance goal, and that is, what do you want Meta to get you more of? So you say to Meta, look, I want purchases, I want leads, I want whatever. That's what the performance goal means. And they use that to optimize the campaign. It's really important. 
it defaults, once you select in Instagram profile as your destination, it defaults to maximize number of Instagram profile visits and we can't change it. And that's absolutely fine, that's great. So we're gonna go ahead with that and then move on. You don't need to worry about bid control. You don't need to worry about dynamic creative yet. I have other videos on dynamic creative, link in the video description in case you're interested, bit more of an advanced technique, but we don't need to worry about that here. And then the same is gonna to apply to budget and schedule. I'm just gonna leave it at the default 20 pound per day. My recommendation is to start small, see how it performs, then look to scale. Um, but of course, I have other resources on budget. Again, another link in the video description will be on a, to a video all about how to set your budget, things like that. I know that's useful for people. Um, so lots of links in the video description, but you can check them out if you do or don't want to go through that stuff. This video is gonna remain focused on what the topic of this is, which is getting Instagram followers, okay? So I'm then gonna go down to audience control. Now we can see that we've defaulted here to the location in which I'm in, which is the United Kingdom. But we can, of course, open this up and change this, narrow it down, all that sort of stuff. So when it comes to location targeting, I'd recommend you go with one of two strategies. Now, if you want your Instagram followers to be potential customers, clients of yours going forward, which most people will, then you only want to run ads in the locations in which you are actually able to deliver products or deliver services or something like that. So for example, that might just be the one country. My business, for example, as, a, as an ads agency, you know, we would look to add in some of our core markets like the US, for example, we have clients that we run ad campaigns for in the US as well as the UK, as well as all around the world, to be honest, but, but that would be one of our main markets. You can look to add those in. You could also go the other way. Let's say you're a service-based business and you can't operate you know, nationwide, you just operate in a local area. You could delete these out. I could delete this, for example, and we could go for something like um, this. Cheltenham is a town in England that I live in. And when I add in England, we get the top result here. So I can just add in Cheltenham. This is where I live. Um, and then we can set a radius around this. We could be Cheltenham plus 25 miles, or we could change that to less, more, depending on how far we're either willing to travel to do the work or how far we think people will be willing to travel if, say, for example, they come into our office or our studio or whatever it happens to be. Okay. So you really want to change this to be wherever your customers are. Pretty straightforward. There is also another option. So let's say that you're less concerned about uh, building an Instagram following that is only of people that could potentially become customers of yours and you just want to build an Instagram following. You want to increase that number because of some of the things I mentioned. You're more likely to get booked onto podcasts or speaking gigs or you know, lots of people have different objectives here. Then what I'd recommend in that scenario is that you really broaden out where you target and you include some uh, locations that are less expensive to advertise in where you will see a much lower cost per new Instagram follower than you would targeting other locations. So for example, if I was taking that approach, now we would still add in um, the main locations that we've got, you know, places like the United Kingdom, um, where we're based and, and the United States, but we would also look to add in some cheaper locations where there are still plenty of English speaking people because my ads are gonna be in English. Countries like India, for example, where we're gonna see a much lower cost per follow. Now we do also have clients from India and countries all around the world but we know that on average if you've got a thousand people that you know consume my content follow me on instagram in say the united states versus a thousand people in india we're going to convert more of those people in the us because of affordability and, and all those sorts of things right but if we're looking for the following, you wanna get as many people as possible, um, make your budget stretch as far as possible, then we're gonna to look to add in countries like India and other English speaking countries, countries that are less expensive to advertise in, particularly for us, it'd be in Asia and Africa and places like that, okay? Um, so really just have a think about what your core objective is. You could always try a little bit of both. You could perhaps run a broader campaign to try and get, um, just boost that number so that you look more credible online and then switch and focus more on, okay, we're only now gonna get new followers in places where we think those people can go on to become customers. So really just sort of tailor that to your specific approach. I'm just gonna go with the United Kingdom for now and then we're, we're gonna move on and we're gonna scroll down to this uh, audience section. Then in this advantage plus audience section, there's a few things um, that we need to, to, to work out and go through here and a few different strategies I'd recommend depending on where you're at right now. So ignore custom audiences for a minute. We're gonna be coming to that in just a second. Uh, first thing to change is age. So if I was to think of the people that are typically interested in the sort of stuff I post on Instagram, it's like Facebook ads, Instagram ad tips, um, they pretty much span the age ranges. We might put an upper cap limit on of say, 
55, 60, but we've got clients, people who have bought courses of mine and things that are older than that. So we would probably just leave it open. But for some businesses, this is going to be more significant um, than others because of the type of stuff that you share. You want to make sure that the people who go on to follow you actually are interested in the stuff you share. Otherwise it's pointless, right? So just have a little think about that. And then again, gender, we would just go with all genders, um, but some businesses may be very heavily skewed, you know, one way or the other, and, and you, can, you can adjust that um, as you see fit. Nothing wrong with keeping that nice and open though. Then we get to the detailed targeting section. So if I go ahead and click edit in here. So what you want to do now really depends on where you're at. So if you're just getting started, you've got a new Instagram account or you've only got you know a couple dozen followers, anything less than say 100 followers, then what I do is I'd start in this detailed targeting section and I wouldn't overthink this, just enter in some options that you think represent the stuff that you talk about that, that are gonna be a good descriptor of people that are interested in the things that you have to talk about. So for me, for example, I could simply come in here and go with something like social media marketing. I know that that's an option. And then, you know, when I'm talking about how to get good results with Instagram ads and Facebook ads and things like that, then social media marketing, I want to select the interest option, by the way, here, watch out for that, not, you know, job title. Um, the interest social media marketing is a good option to go with. There are other options I could include like digital marketing. So just type in some terms that are closely related and you'll find some stuff. No need to overthink it. You can also browse. So you can click on browse and you can just go through all the various categories to find things that, that are applicable um, for your uh, for your business and, and for the content that you talk about. Okay, so if you've got less than 100, less than 200, say, followers, I just go ahead and start with something like that. As I said, no need to overthink it. Now, if you've got more than 100, 200 followers, but less than, say, 2,000 followers, I would change up the targeting strategy. So instead of putting in some detailed targeting options, I'd delete that out, leave that blank. And instead, what I'd recommend you do is create a lookalike audience based on your existing Instagram followers. And what that means is you're basically saying to Meta, look, these are the people that follow me on Instagram. I'd quite like you to create an audience of people that are very similar to the people that already follow me on Instagram, because I think those people are likely to want to follow me on Instagram as well. Makes sense, right? And I'll show you quickly how we go about doing that. We need to set that up in the custom audiences um, section. So so if I just go ahead and delete uh, to minimize that down, click on these three little lines, all tools here. And then what we want to do is find audiences. So if we scroll down in here, we should make our way down to this audiences section. I'm just gonna click on that, let that load up. Then you'll probably come through to a page that looks something like this. We've already created a bunch of custom audiences, lookalike audience. This is an example ad account, so I use it for that sort of stuff. Um, if you don't see a page that looks like this because you haven't done anything in here yet, don't worry about that. That's absolutely fine. And if you want to find out more information about how to create custom audiences, which allow you to retarget things like website visitors, people on your email list, that stuff, there'll be a link in the video description. And I'll also include another link to a full tutorial on lookalike audiences as well. So lots of extra resources for you guys today. Uh, but on this video, I want to focus on the one I talked about specifically, which is creating a lookalike audience audience based off of our existing Instagram followers. So if we go ahead up here and click on create audience and then custom audience, we need to create the custom audience first to then create the lookalike. And then the source audience, well, the, the custom audience itself, which is going to be the source, we're going to go ahead and select Instagram account. Now, Make sure you've got the right Instagram account selected up here. If you don't have that already hooked up within your uh, Meta Business account, that'll be covered in that tutorial I already mentioned on how to set everything up in the first place. And then the default event here is everyone who engaged with this professional account. Now, if you don't have many followers at all, I'd recommend starting with this because that's going to give you the largest possible audience. But let's say you're within that window I talked about, that 100 to 2,000 uh, follower range, and you want to use this strategy, but you already have you know a good four or 500 followers, then I'd recommend changing it to people who follow your professional account on Instagram, okay? Um, and then we want to give this an audience name. So let's go with just very simply Instagram followers and then go ahead and click create audience. And it'll take Meta a little bit of time to populate this, but that's absolutely fine. We're going to go ahead and select done for now and minimize this down. So then we've got our Instagram followers audience. You can see over here, it says it's populating, but we can use it. So if you select Instagram followers, that's now the actual people that follow us on Instagram. And then in order to create that lookalike audience I talked about where it's like, please Meta, go and find people that are very similar to people that already follow me on Instagram. You select this little checkbox here, then these three little dots and you select create lookalike. Now, when you do this, um, your source up here, the source audience for your lookalike audience as Instagram followers should have been added automatically. Sometimes it's not, but you can just select from the drop down if you've got a few different options. And then we need to add in our locations, right? So in this case, we're advertising in the United Kingdom for the demonstration. So we're going to add in United Kingdom. Now we need to select the percentage lookalike that we want to use. And this really depends on where you're advertising. So if you're advertising somewhere where there are 
a lot of people, then you want to go with a lower percentage. So for advertising for the whole of the UK, it's absolutely fine to go with 1% because that's 550,000 people. That, that's how many people have um, Instagram and Facebook accounts within the UK. It's roughly 55 million, so 1% is 550,000. Um, if you're advertising to the whole of the US, absolutely fine. Same with a lot of countries. If you're just advertising in a local area and your potential audience is much, much smaller, then you absolutely want to go ahead and use a larger percentage. So that example I gave where we were just advertising in to Cheltenham and the surrounding area, we would be using a 10% um, for sure, just because there are far fewer people in there. So we need to reach a larger percentage of the population within that area. Hopefully that makes sense uh, and isn't too confusing. I'm gonna go with 1% because that'll work for us for now. Then click create audience and it will take, once again, Meta a little bit of time to populate that. But now what we can do is we can jump back over to ads manager, we click on all tools and then ads manager. And then we should be brought back into our ad account, into Ads Manager, and then we can jump from campaigns, go back to the ad set level, because that's what we were working on. If we click edit on this, and then um, now that we've set up that lookalike audience based off of our Instagram followers, um, we can then come down to this advantage for us audience. Oh, by the way, if you see this audience suggestion optional, um, I would definitely recommend clicking into that because that will present um, this option in here. And then in this custom audiences section, that's where we're gonna add in a lookalike audience. I know the names are, difficult and confusing, but it's absolutely fine. You just want to go ahead and add in your 1% Instagram followers, and that will then target people that are very similar to people that already follow me on Instagram, which logically is a good targeting option to use. Now, that's another strategy when it comes to targeting. A third strategy is that if you've got more than 2,000 and certainly higher numbers, I don't think you even need to go with this step and include the lookalike audience. So what I'd recommend at that point is that you delete that out. You don't include any detailed targeting. You don't add anything in age, gender, no, no uh, restricting criteria. And you just go with what's called open targeting, broad targeting, and you target everyone. Now, the reason why we do that is because if you've already got thousands of Instagram followers, Meta's got a pretty good idea of who is likely to go on and become an Instagram follower of yours anyway. They don't need the guidance. And this way you get to take advantage of the largest possible audiences. So that's the logic behind having three different targeting strategies for this Instagram follower campaign based on how many followers you've got and where you're at. I'm currently on about 18,000. So if I was to run um, an Instagram follower campaign, then I would just go with open targeting and, and that would probably work best. Again, I'll include another link in the video description to another video talking all about open targeting, the pros, cons, how it works, it, it, just in case you are interested, okay? So that's our targeting setup. The next section down here is placements. Now it's important to get this right, but provided you've set things up as I have done, you won't get this wrong, I'll show you what I mean. Now the default is advantage plus placements, which is typically everywhere on Facebook, Instagram, uh, and a couple of different options. We obviously only want to run ads on Instagram, but because we selected the Instagram profile as the location to send people once they click on our ads, that's taken care of for, for us by Meta um, anyway. So if you just click on manual placements to just confirm this, you can see that look, Facebook audience network and messenger are all grayed out. Instagram is selected. If we wanted to, we could get more specific. We could say, look, I want to show up on Instagram stories, but not Instagram feeds and vice versa. We've tested this a whole bunch and I think it makes sense just to go with all the Instagram placements and let Meta work it out. They will see now that we've got that location and the performance goal as send people to my Instagram profile, They'll work it out and put your ads in places where you are most likely to get that action. Um, people coming through to your Instagram profile, which is obviously going to be the people that are most likely to then go ahead and follow once they get there, assuming, of course, they like what they see. So that's all set up. I just wanted to quickly highlight it because maybe we might be like, surely you need to manual placements. Um, actually, in this scenario, no, you don't. So I'm going to quickly rename this ad set um, because we're going with um, open targeting, aren't we? UK. Just as a little side note, I like to name an ad set, whatever the targeting is, so that when we've got lots of different ad sets, we can quickly and easily see. And by the way, if you're confused which of those targeting strategies to use, you can always create new ad sets and test them and see which one forms best. So you could test open versus an interest versus a 1% look like based on your current Instagram followers and just run those three alongside each other, see which forms best. Um, we run tests all the time. Oh, and by the way, if you would like the results that we got for this client or for this client, you can click on the link in the video description below. There you'll be able to find out more about our done for you Facebook ad services. 
Okay, now let's jump to the third level, which is the traffic ad. Okay, so this is where we're gonna actually create the ad that gets put in front of people that is hopefully going to convince them to come through to our Instagram profile and then follow. So um, partnership ad is almost certainly not something you need to worry about. Then you've got the Facebook page that might be default selected. Instagram account, obviously make sure that you actually select your Instagram account. You do not want to have your ads appear on Instagram as from your Facebook page. That would make no sense, especially when you want followers. So I would just go ahead and click on here and make sure that you've got your actual Instagram um, account selected because we want obviously our ads to come from our Instagram account. Then we come down to the ad setup section. Now the default here is create ad, but you can select here, use existing posts. And if you click on that, you'll then be taken through to a page where you can just simply select a post or some posts from um, your Instagram profile. And then you can use those and run those as ads. I would probably not recommend doing that because I imagine what you've already got there isn't gonna be as tailored to convincing people to follow you on Instagram as the ads I would like you to run. I'm about to give you um, an example. So I would create ad, but just be aware that that's that is an option. And I'm gonna go ahead with single image um, or video here. Normally I would deselect multi-advertiser ads, but I think in this scenario, it doesn't matter that much. Okay, then I'm gonna focus on this media section. So I'm gonna go ahead and click add media here, and I'm gonna add a video. And I would recommend that you do use a short video for this because I think it really helps. It gives you the time and space to convince people to follow you on Instagram. You can present a case as to why they should do so. And I'm about to, to show you an example, okay? So I'm just gonna quickly upload a video. Whilst that's uploading, I'm gonna quickly show you the actual video itself. I would normally use nowadays something a little bit more sophisticated than what I'm about to show you because I now have the, the, the skills and the team to make all that sort of thing happen. But I don't want to do that and give that an example because I feel like that's quite a barrier to entry for people. They think that, oh, I wouldn't be able to produce something like that or I wouldn't be able to use this strategy. So what I did instead is dug out a video that I used four years ago to run an Instagram follower campaign to get, I think I've got a couple thousand Instagram followers with this to get my account um, up and running and started. So I'm gonna quickly play this video now so you can see um, what this is and how simple and easy it is. And feel free to just basically completely copy what I say here um, and just customize it slightly for your particular industry. And, and let's quickly go through it and then we can discuss. Hi, my name's Ben Heath. I'm the CEO of Lead Guru, which is a social media marketing agency that generates millions of dollars every year with Facebook advertising and Instagram ad campaigns. If you want to see how we do it, make sure you follow me on Instagram. Just click the link below. That'll take you to my profile and I'll talk to you soon. So you can see that that is super simple, right? I'm just walking the dog in the woods. I've got my phone out and I've just said, look, I'm the CEO of this digital advertising agency. We generate results like this. I talk about this stuff. Here's why I think you should follow. Click the button to do so. Really, really simple, but people can very quickly watch that and be like, oh, I am interested in that stuff. I will go ahead and follow this guy's profile or no, I'm not. I'll do something else. So I'd recommend you create something very simple like that. As I said, create something like that yourself probably today and get this campaign up and running in, in a matter of hours. Okay, so in this video, we've covered how to get the campaign set up, the ad set level and the creative part of the ad level in terms of creating the campaign that's gonna get you these Instagram followers that you're looking for. But I haven't yet covered how to write headlines, how to write primary text, how to bring the ad together and get it live. And the reason why I haven't is because I've already covered all of that stuff in a very detailed video, which you can find right here. In that video, I'll walk you through the entire ad creation process. So I do touch on creative as well, but primarily I start with headlines, primary text and things like that. And those are the other elements you're going to need to get this campaign up and running. So I strongly recommend you go ahead and check this out.